a bear tearfully approached a man and desperately begged for his help. Just moments later, he discovered the unthinkable and turned pale. As Mark trudged along a remote, dense forest, his thoughts were abruptly interrupted by an unusual sound, a deep, mournful whimper that echoed through the trees. It wasn't the call of any animal Mark was familiar with. It was a sound filled with pain, fear, and desperation. Mark's heart quickened. He stopped in his tracks, straining his ears to catch the sound again. His eyes scanned his surroundings, his senses on high alert. After a few minutes of navigating the thick foliage, Mark emerged into a small clearing. And there, pacing, was a large bear with fur matted and dirty. Surprised, Mark remained at a cautious distance, his instincts battling with his concern for the animal. The bear let out another low, anguished moan, then looked directly at Mark as if pleading for help. It seemed to be crying. Mark had never seen anything like this, a wild animal seemingly seeking the aid of a human. Every rational part of his mind told him to turn back to avoid any confrontation with the bear, but the raw emotion in the animal's eyes compelled him to stay. Mark took a deep breath, edging closer, but still maintaining a safe distance. The bear didn't move aggressively, but rather shifted its weight anxiously from one paw to the other, continually looking back at the underbrush. Following the bear's gaze, Mark noticed something that made his stomach drop. A small bear cub trapped in a cruel snare, writhing in pain. The cub's fur was dirty, and its movements were weak, each feeble attempt to free itself causing the snare to tighten further. The sight of the cub struggling pulled at Mark's heartstrings, who immediately turned pale. It was clear that the cub had been caught in a trap set by poachers, one that was not only meant to capture but also to harm, laced with a banned toxic substance designed to incapacitate any animal that got caught. Mark immediately knew why the bear had sought him. Its cub needed help, and it needed it fast. Mark worked quickly, trying to pry the snare open, his hands trembling as he fumbled with the cruel device. The cub whimpered weakly, and Mark's heart ached as he felt the life slipping away from the small creature. He glanced back at the mother bear, who paced anxiously, her eyes never leaving her cub. She let out a mournful, low growl, as if urging Mark to hurry. Mark doubled his efforts, but it was too late. The cub's movements grew weaker, and with one last faint breath, it went still. A heavy silence fell over the clearing. Mark sat back on his heels. His hands were covered in dirt and his eyes welling with tears. He'd failed. He looked up at the mother bear whose eyes were now filled with a deep, unbearable sorrow. She nudged her cub gently with her nose, trying to revive it, but the cub remained motionless. The sight was heart-wrenching, an expression of grief that transcended the boundary between human and animal. The bear let out a pained, echoing roar that reverberated through the forest. Just as Mark thought the mother bear might lash out in her grief, she did something unexpected. She looked at Mark one more time, her eyes brimming with a mixture of sorrow and determination, then let out a loud, commanding growl and began to run. The bear stopped a few paces away and looked back at Mark, as if beckoning him to follow. It was a strange, almost surreal moment. Mark hesitated, unsure of what the bear wanted or where she was leading him. But there was something in the bear's eyes, a plea, a call for help, that compelled Mark to follow. Mark and the bear came to a sudden halt at the bank of a wide, fast-flowing river. The river stretched out before them, its surface churning with a swift current that glistened under the dappled sunlight filtering through the trees. The water was deep and cold, roaring with an uninviting power that sent a shiver down Mark's spine. He stood there, momentarily overwhelmed, staring at the daunting obstacle that lay in their path. The bear, sensing his hesitation, crouched before Mark, her eyes locked onto his, as if urging him to keep following. Then, without hesitation, the bear sprang up and began pacing along the riverbank, 
sniffing the air and occasionally dipping a paw into the frigid water. Her movements were fluid and purposeful, indicating a deep familiarity with the river's dynamics. The bear let out a frustrated growl, clearly wanting to cross but aware of the dangers. She waded in briefly, testing the current but quickly retreated. Mark watched as the bear tried again, wading in deeper this time, only to be forced back by the unyielding flow of the river. Mark then scanned the surroundings, searching for a safer crossing, and spotted a short distance away a bridge that spanned the river, barely visible through the dense foliage. The bear, as if she'd been looking for the bridge, spotted it too and quickly began walking towards it. The bridge was unlike anything Mark had ever seen. A crude compilation of fallen trees, branches, and vines, hastily thrown together to form a narrow, unstable path across the water. The wood looked weathered and precarious, swaying slightly with the rush of the water beneath it. Mark approached cautiously, inspecting the bridge with a critical eye. It was risky, but it seemed to be their only option. He looked at the bear, who was watching him intently, probably waiting for him to make the first move. With a mix of fear and determination, Mark stepped onto the first log. It shifted slightly under his weight, creaking ominously, but it held. He took another step, carefully testing each foothold before moving forward. The bridge swayed and branches groaned in protest, but Mark pressed on, driven by the bear's unwavering gaze. The river roared beneath him, the sound of rushing water filling his ears, drowning out everything else. Each step felt like a leap of faith, and Mark's pulse quickened with every uncertain movement. Halfway across, Mark paused to catch his breath. He glanced back at the bear, who was pacing on the riverbank, watching his every move. The bear let out a low growl, as if urging him to keep going. Mark nodded, more to himself than to the bear, and continued his precarious journey. The wind picked up, making the bridge sway even more, and for a moment, Mark's foot slipped on the slick surface of a log. He grabbed onto a nearby branch, his heart leaping into his throat as he steadied himself. The cold spray of the river splashed up, stinging his skin, reminding him of the danger that lurked just beneath him. With one final careful step, Mark reached the other side. He exhaled deeply, relief washing over him as his feet touched solid ground. He turned back to see the bear cautiously approaching the bridge. The bear stepped onto the log and slowly began to make her way across. Mark watched, ready to help if needed, but the bear was nimble despite her size. She moved with a graceful yet cautious precision, her claws gripping the wood as she carefully picked her way across. The bridge swayed under the bear's weight, creaking loudly, but the bear never wavered. She kept her eyes forward, focused on the goal, until finally she reached the other side. The bear leapt off the last log and landed on the other side of the river. Without wasting any more time, the bear set off again, moving swiftly now that they had overcome the river. Mark followed, his pace quickening to keep up. The terrain on this side of the river was different, wilder, less touched by human hands, and filled with an unsettling stillness. The trees got denser, their branches forming a tangled maze that blocked out much of the sky. Mark sensed that they were venturing deeper into the heart of the forest, far from any known trail or human presence. After crossing the river, Mark and the bear continued deeper into the forest, moving quickly through the dense underbrush. But suddenly, the trees gave way to a vast open clearing. Mark stopped in his tracks his breath catching in his throat as he took in the sight before him. At the center of the clearing was a large circus cage, rusted and worn, its iron bars standing in stark contrast against the natural beauty of the forest. Mark's heart sank as he saw the other bears inside the cage. Four adult bears, gaunt and miserable, their fur matted and stained with dirt. They paced back and forth within their cramped space, their movements slow and lethargic. Mark's eyes were drawn to a bear cub lying on the ground, barely moving. It stared up at the sky with dull, lifeless eyes. Mark felt a pang of recognition, 
The cub looked almost identical to the one that died in the snare. He realized with a sickening jolt that the bear that led him here was the mother of one of the cubs, and the one he tried to save was this cub's twin. The mother bear rushed to the cage, pressing her nose against the bars as she nuzzled the cub inside. Mark watched in silence, his heart breaking at the sight of the bear's desperate attempts to comfort her surviving cub. The other bears barely acknowledged their presence. They were too weak, too resigned to their fate. Mark stepped closer, his anger and sadness swelling as he took in the full horror of the scene. The cage was a cruel prison, lined with sharp, rusted spikes, and stained with dried blood. There were remnants of old food, scraps of rotten meat that the bears had been forced to scavenge. The sight of these once majestic creatures, reduced to shadows of their former selves, filled Mark with a deep sense of rage. He understood now why the bear had been so frantic. Her family was in captivity, tortured by a fate worse than death. As Mark inspected the cage, he noticed chains and collars, with tags labeled with numbers and bizarre names. There were training whips, muzzles, and other instruments of torment scattered around the area, further evidence of the horrific treatment these animals had endured. Mark felt sick to his stomach. He stumbled upon the remnants of a cruel and illegal circus operation, one that exploited and brutalized animals for profit. The poachers who'd set the snare were not hunters. Mark's mind reeled as he began to piece together the truth. These poachers weren't just trapping bears. They were torturing them, breaking their spirits, and turning them into unwilling performers. The bears were starved, beaten, and trained in careless ways, their will to survive stripped away with every cruel act. Mark realized that the bear he followed wasn't just seeking help for her cub, she was pleading for the freedom of her entire family. Mark's emotions surged between fury and helplessness. He wanted to break the cage open to free the bears right then and there, but he knew that he was unarmed and outnumbered if the poachers were to return. He examined the lock on the cage, a heavy padlock that would require bolt cutters or a key to open. The mother bear paced outside, letting out mournful groans, and Mark could see the sheer desperation in her eyes. The bear cub inside the cage pressed closer to her, as if trying to find solace in her presence even from behind the bars. As Mark continued to observe, his focus shifted to the surroundings. He noticed signs of recent activity. A campfire site, empty food cans, and a pile of dirty blankets tossed carelessly to the side. This place was more than just a holding area. It was a base of operations, a hidden hub for these poachers to train and torture their captives. Mark looked back at the cage, his fist clenched in anger. He knew that he couldn't leave these animals here, but rushing in without a plan would only endanger them further. Mark's mind raced as he considered his options. He took out his phone, snapping photos of the cage, the bears, and the poacher's gear. He knew he would need evidence if he was going to get the authorities involved. As he watched the bears, Mark felt the weight of responsibility pressing down on him. He couldn't just walk away now, not after seeing the truth of what was happening here. He spent the next several hours hiding in the underbrush, waiting and watching, determined to gather as much information as he could. As night fell, Mark heard voices echoing through the forest. The poachers had returned. Mark's heart pounded as he watched from his hiding spot, anger boiling inside him as the men approached the cage. They were armed, loud and careless, treating the bears with utter disdain. They laughed and shouted, poking at the bears with sticks and throwing scraps of food into the cage like it was some kind of sick game. Mark watched in horror as the poachers began to force the bears into performing tricks. The bears were exhausted. Their movements were sluggish, yet they didn't stop. They had been trained into submission through fear and pain. The men shouted commands, prodding the animals when they didn't comply quickly enough, their cruel laughter echoing through the night. Mark's hands trembled as he watched, tears welling up in his eyes at the sheer brutality of the scene. He knew he had to act, but he was only one man against a group of armed poachers. Mark quietly retreated, determined to get help. In the dead of night, Mark made his way back home, his mind racing with plans. 
He contacted the local wildlife authorities and explained everything he'd seen, showing them the photos and begging them to act quickly. Mark's story shocked the authorities, and they promised to send a team to apprehend the poachers and rescue the bears. The next day, Mark returned to the clearing, this time with law enforcement and a team of wildlife rescuers. They approached the area carefully, setting up a perimeter and preparing for the worst. As the poachers arrived, Mark felt his heart race, adrenaline flooding his veins. The authorities sprung into action, surrounding the poachers and demanding they surrender. A tense standoff ensued with the poachers resisting capture, but in the end they were overpowered and arrested, with two poachers killed and one soldier injured. Mark, who also got shot and injured during the fight, approached the mother bear, maintaining a respectful distance. She looked at him. For a brief moment, their eyes met in a silent exchange of gratitude and understanding. Mark knew that while he'd uncovered a dark and hidden truth, he'd also found a way to make things right. The forest felt different now, filled with the quiet hope of a new beginning. The bears were released and Mark was taken to the hospital through the ambulance where he collected treatment. Two months later, Mark now recovered from his injuries, returned to the forest. The once ominous circus cage was gone. As he walked through, he felt a sense of peace, knowing that the bears were finally safe from harm. Suddenly, a familiar figure emerged from the tree. It was the bear cub. She was now stronger and more confident. She stared at Mark, recognition flickering in her eyes before running off. Moments later, the mama bear appeared and watched him with a mixture of gratitude and joy. They shared a silent moment, a mutual acknowledgement of the bond forged through their shared ordeal. Mark planted a beautiful flower at the spot where the circus cage once stood, a symbol of hope and remembrance. As he walked away, he carried with him the knowledge that despite the pain and suffering, he'd brought a measure of justice to the forest. The bear's fight was his fight, and together they'd won. What do you think about what Mark did? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.